In macroeconomics, nominal variables are variables measured at current prices, while real variables are those measured using the prices of the base year. If you still remember, we've used an example of computers to demonstrate how inflation affects a country's nominal GDP and real GDP while we were talking about gross domestic product. Other than GDP, there are in fact many variables that can be divided into nominal and real in economics. The interest rate, which will be discussed today, is also one of them. The nominal interest rate is the interest rate without taking inflation into account. Let's say you've just used $1,000 to buy a one-year bond with a 10% yield. One year later, you can get back the $1,000 principal together with an extra $100 as interest. This $100 can be regarded as the compensation for delaying your consumption. In other words, you pay $1,000 today and you get back $1,100 after one year's time. And the nominal interest rate of this bond is therefore 10%. On the other hand, the real interest rate is the rate of interest a saver or an investor receives after adjusting for inflation. Assume that you use $1,000 to buy a bond today and can get back $1,100 next year. It seems that you have earned $100 interest, or a return of 10% from this. Yet it doesn't mean that your real purchasing power has also increased by 10% at the same time. When there's inflation, the general price level will keep rising during the year, and the purchasing power of money will drop correspondingly. So one year later, you can only buy fewer things with that $100 interest than right now. Then how can we obtain the real interest rate to evaluate if an investment or a savings plan is worth doing? It's actually very simple. According to the Fisher equation, the nominal interest rate approximately equals to the expected real interest rate plus expected rate of inflation. Nominal interest rate approximately equals expected real interest rate plus expected rate of inflation. Assume that the market expected rate of inflation is 3% and you decide to buy a bond with a 10% yield. The expected real interest rate equals to 10% nominal interest rate minus 3% expected rate of inflation, which is about 7%. From the formula, we can see that when the market expects there will be inflation, expected real interest rate will be lower than the nominal interest rate. On the contrary, if a market expects there will be deflation, the expected rate of inflation will be negative instead. Under such circumstances, the expected real interest rate will be higher than the nominal interest rate. Yet, expected rate of inflation is merely the market estimate of the inflation rate in the coming year, and the actual inflation rate may turn out to be different from our current estimate. If the general price level greatly increases during the coming year and results in a 12% actual inflation, the actual real interest rate of the bond we mentioned earlier will equal to 10% nominal interest rate minus 12% actual inflation rate, which equals to minus 2%. Nominal interest rate equals actual real interest rate plus actual inflation rate. 10% equals minus 2% plus 12%. You may feel strange about this negative figure. In fact, a 12% real inflation rate means that you can only buy something that costs $1,000 today with $1,200 one year later. If you are using $1,000 to buy a bond with a nominal interest rate of 10%, you will only be able to receive $1,100 in the next year. In other words, after one year, your purchasing power will not be enough for buying things which can be bought with $1,000 today. From this, we can see that when the actual inflation rate is higher than the nominal interest rate, your return in real terms will be negative, which reflects a lowered purchasing power. In addition to the formula mentioned before, we'll also discuss the return and cost of holding cash. Let's talk about the return first. In order to understand the return of holding cash, let's assume we have a $100 banknote in hand. 10 years later, the figure printed on this $100 banknote will be exactly the same. 
Therefore, the nominal return of holding cash in hand is always zero. And the real return of holding cash is indeed the purchasing power of money. Assume that we have $100 in hand. When there's inflation, the purchasing power will drop and the amount of things we can buy with this $100 will be less than before. In other words, the real return of this $100 is negative. This shows the inverse relationship between the real return of holding cash and the inflation rate. In fact, the real return of holding cash equals to negative of the inflation rate. Lastly, let's see the cost of holding cash. If we choose not to hold cash in hand, the easiest way is to put it into our deposit accounts to earn interest. Therefore, the cost of holding cash is the deposit interest we've foregone, which is the return represented by the nominal interest rate.